Oh my gosh. I did not know a car could get this hot. Like, seriously? I know this is California in the summertime, but like, oh my gosh. I look like crap, but it's okay. Today is a very theaterlicious day. I was just house managing for Cinderella at Foothill College. They had their closing day, so there was a lot of concessions to break down in the sweltering heat and things to put away. And now I'm headed to South Bay Music Theater's rehearsal space for orientation for Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. I am the wig master. I'm the wig designer for that production, and so we'll be doing some wig fittings and orientation stuff. Let's go. You're a movographer and your assistant director. Movographer sounds a lot less scary than you put it Movographer. So much less scary. I'm assistant producer and I will do things that are asked of me. And this is uh, on my way. Uh, Hi, I'm Gwyneth. I'm the hair designer and makeup person. This is what you see when you walk in to the house. So we have... Oh. We really oh hope, we really hope. Magic happens behind the red curtain. When the red curtain goes up, anything that has to happen, we are not attempting to hide it from the audience. And that will all develop in rehearsal as we figure it out, and some of it will become finalized when we're actually in the theater. And I go, oh, that's how that's gonna work, okay. We have this backdrop, blow it up a little bit so you can see it better, um, which is a black and white line drawing of a Victorian sort of collage of different Victorian wallpapers so that it can represent many different interior locations. Instead of being one specific one, it's sort of a collage of many. My goal is since you have so many costume changes to have as few wig changes as possible because you can change a hat, you know, and posture, and you don't need a different wig. So that's my goal. But except we'll, for your fright Except for you, of course. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm going to keep saying, no, uglier, uglier. <laughs> really? Oh, no. No, no she That's should be hideous. Oh, man, it had this vision. It was so pretty. <laughs> we'll she it. was pretty 75 years ago. <laughs> wow. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> if you are more familiar with the Broadway production of Gentleman's Guide, they did it Victorian. Mm -hmm. We are doing it Edwardian. It makes, it's gonna be so much better for the women. They're gonna look so, oh my God, Phoebe and Savelle are gonna look so great. I can't even wait. Yay. So. Facial hair, should we ask people to grow stuff or glue stuff? The it's players nicer. should not have facial hair. Okay. Dice with can't have facial hair. And I don't see Monty with facial hair, but we can, we can play with it. <laughs> the problem is if you make it go away, I lose 15 years. That's fine. That's fine. I don't mind him young. That's fine. And your, your brides won't mind. Oh. <laughs> As we go through the moveography, we might find, oh, maybe we can do a split here, Aaliyah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think everyone would be speaking in pure cockney. Certainly, as Walter was saying earlier, real cockney, no one would understand a word you're saying. But So it'll be a modified cockney, and you can modify it. If you have ideas for some regional dialect that you'd like to do for a character, I'm totally open. And your company, SBMT, has been very generous. This doesn't happen often. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching with every one of you. You know, we don't call you the ensemble. You're the players, right? And so with the players being ten people rather than six, it is, it's given us a little bit of, a bit of reading room so that every change you make isn't a nightmare. And the only one of you I've really screwed over is Brayden, and I've done it on purpose. You look, you look at Brayden's Act 2 track, and you're just going to go, how? Oh. And it's up to him to figure it out. Oh, no. Uh, my wife is in London and rarely comes to Salisbury. I was speaking of my bees. Outside the shack are several trays containing thousands of bees. I've developed a bit of a compulsion for beekeeping. I find it endlessly fascinating and deeply moving. My mother was a dice fit and my father was... While the cast does their first read-through, the costumers pull out a variety of doodads for cast members to try on. Some items like corsets, petticoats, and shoes will actually be worn early on in the rehearsal process, so the actors can practice performing in attire that's much more restraining than modern outfits. 
And while all this is going on, we're also doing wig fittings. So pretty much I brought a bin of wigs that I like to use for updos, and I'm checking to see how they fit the actors. Are they comfortable? Will I need to expand any or sew elastic into them for more security? I'm also seeing how the color of the wigs complement their skin tone. And in some cases, I'm actually choosing a wig that matches the actor's hair color perfectly, so that if and when any of the hair peeks out around the sides of the wig, it all blends together and looks super natural. And that concludes orientation for A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my process as the wig designer for this fabulous musical. Bye, everyone. Look at those cheekbones. I know.